What's up, guys? Hong Nguyen, OG Fitness. Welcome to the channel. If you are new, consider, well, liking and subscribing, of course. Um, and this channel is all about fitness for martial arts for older guys. Now, if you're a young guy, you're going to learn a lot from uh, our experiences, right? The whole community, uh, all the OGs and all that. And it's going to benefit you. It's going to make you better. It's going to help you avoid uh, injury. And, um, you know, it's it's... It's going to be good. All right. <laughs> so in today's video, we're going to talk about how to rehab your knee for judo. Okay. So now let me read you the comment that uh, sparked this, this video. So this is from uh, Rabid Honey Badger 5436. Um, I started at 46 and got my knee wrecked by a much bigger and much younger blue belt. Uh, I was white, and now over a year later, I'm left with a still torn meniscus and a loose kneecap. My advice is as tempting as tempting as it is, don't do it. So this was in response to a video that I made called How to Start Judo When You're Older. All right, so I think that, and for this video, there's two things here. The first thing is that he, uh, sorry, Rabid, yeah, I think, okay is that he fought, he he went with a bigger blue belt younger probably didn't have as much uh, control and yeah so that's in the video in itself uh, where i think that it's very important how you approach your training and one of the things is not to go with you know these 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 crazy bigger young dudes Okay, especially if you're, if you're an older guy, like just say no, man, just say no, just, just sit it out, doesn't matter. But that's for another video. Uh, but here I'm going to address on how to rehab the knee, okay, because I want to help out um, um, this, this brother right here. Okay, so how, do you, how would you rehab your knee? Uh, first things first. If you're overweight, okay, you got to lose the weight because that weight, that extra weight that you have, it's going to, it's added pressure on your joints. That's one. And also if you have a lot, if you if you have a lot of body fat on you, that usually means that you're eating like crap. So if you're eating like crap, it's going to cause inflammation and all that. Okay. So like, yeah, you got, you got to be fit, you know, to, to, to do a sport, like a power sport, like judo. So that's one. So the first step is to lose that weight. If, if you're not, if you're already in shape more or less. Okay. I mean, it's okay if you have a little bit of, uh, you know, body fat, you're at, let's say, you know, I don't know, 20% and all that, but anything above 20, man, it's starting to, because at 30%, you're essentially obese, right? That's the, uh, that's the number. So you want to be like around 20%. If you're 20, any more than that, like, yeah, drop to 20. And ideally you want to be like around 15, like 15. Okay. Okay. So drop the weight. Now, the other thing, inwards it's called the uh, it's called valgus right the valgus uh whatever you know and this is not good like if you're if your knees are like like this like like uh going towards the inside like that because and usually that's because of your feet you walking duck feet walk with your feet straight i know it might be hard you gotta be but just do it it's gonna help okay now then uh knees over toes like don't do anything uh with knees over toes like especially if you have weight over your back Okay. And that's the thing. Like there are certain positions that you have to get into when you practice martial arts where your knees will be over your toes. And that's why I say that if you're, if you're overweight, you have too much fat on your body and all that, it's gonna, it's gonna be harder on your joints when you, when you do stuff like that. But what I'm saying is that when you're doing, um, things in your sport that, re that are gonna require you to have your knees over toes, that's okay. But if what you could, what, what you do is that if you're, if you're, if you're fat, if you're really fat, then it's going to have an impact on, it's going to, it's going to stress that knee a lot more. And so besides your sport, outside of your sport, when you're actually in the, in the gym training or doing calisthenics or whatever, like don't go knees over toes, especially with weight on, on your, on your, uh, when you're carrying your weight, whether it be dumbbells in your hands or on your back. I know the the knees over toe guy is uh, is very um, very popular right now, saying that oh you have to train that range, but 
Hmm, I don't know, man. I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't risk it, you know, because body mechanics is body mechanics. Like there's 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 a lot of shearing going on. If you imagine this is your knee, you go out like this, right? It's nice and easy on your joint, but now you're going like this, and then you're pressing like ah, and you're like wait. I don't know, man. I think that you have to build up to that. So there's 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 certain like, and I think that you could do that with just your body weight. But if you're too fat, then it's it's no good either. Okay. It's not a knock on fat people. It just, it is what it is, man. So no knees over toes. Okay. Walk with your feet straight. And now what you're going to need to do is that you're going to need to really have your lower, your lower body. So essentially um, like your legs and your glutes. Okay. You're going to need these muscles to be strong, to be endurance, to be smart slash coordinated. We'll talk about that in a second. And you want it to be loose, loose as in not tight and not flexible. Okay, this is going to help a lot. So where do you start? I'm going to make other videos where I'm going to post in the stories and all that, how to exercise each each uh, each of these things, each, each of these uh, body parts, right? Uh, meaning your feet, your ankle, your calves, your quads, your hamstrings, and your glutes. But for now, I'm just giving you like the... Um, uh, the knowledge that you need to understand, right? To how to rehab this. So you start with the feet. Why do you want, and the feet and the ankle are obviously connected. You want strong feet because the feet, okay? Like your ankle rests on your foot. And then after that, your knee and everything else, it's, it's, it's the base is important. So this is the foot and then the ankle is on top and then the knee is on top. And then after that, it's your, um, what do you call it? Uh, your, your, you know, your, uh, your glutes, your hips, right? So everything is connected. So you start with the feet. You want strong feet. You want strong ankles. You want strong and flexible feet, strong and flexible ankles, strong and flexible calves. Well, well, the calf, it's not a joint, you know, like the muscles and all that. You want the quads, the hands, the glutes. Now, for the feet and the ankle, like the two basic things that you need to do is basically... If you stand on the ball of your foot, okay, that already strengthens your feet a lot, okay? And if you grip your, if you're doing any kind of exercise, if you, you consciously grip the ground with your toes, it's going to help to, to create tension in your foot and the muscles in your foot. So it's going to, it's over time, it's going to make it stronger. And of course, calf raises, right? Calf raises, when you raise the calf, basically you're using your foot, the muscles in your foot, but you're also strengthening, uh, you're, you're moving up and down uh, your ankle. Okay, so you're strengthening the muscles, the tendons, the ligaments, and all that, like around the ankle. And then, of course, you're working the calf. So when you look at a joint, like this is the joint. Okay, you have the muscles above, you have the muscles underneath. So those things have to be strong so that that way it, uh, it, it supports the joint itself. Okay, and then the joint has to be moved and bent and go like moved in its range of motion, right? So that there's fluid that goes through it so that it, uh, it, it's lubricated and it, um, it heals and it, uh, it functions better. Right. And of course, another thing that you could do. OK. And, and when it comes to being a smart um, and coordinated muscle, what that means is that refers to the ability to stabilize. You want your muscles to be able to um, if they're smart and they're, your muscles are coordinated, then they're going to they're going to be able to stabilize when uh, when needed, when it's off balance. Okay, so that's what's going to help a lot with preventing injury is if you have that ability and that has to be trained. And how do you do that? Well, you could stand on anything that causes some kind of imbalance. So what I like to do is that I, ha I buy these. Um, I don't have them here uh, because I just moved here, but I, I just I'm going to order them today. But these balance disc balance this, but the, the ones that uh, you put the air in and it's nice and soft. Okay, because when it's soft, you could also your feet gets a workout too. The muscles in your feet, when you stand on it, it gets a workout. And then you got you to gotta stabilize. So then your muscles learn to stabilize. They learn to be well-coordinated and to fire and to react and to respond according to uh, the demands of, um, of, well, not falling over, you know, like balance demands, okay? And so that's what you could do for your feet, uh, your ankles, and, and your calves, okay? 
Now, for the quads, the hands and the glutes. Like those three things could be taken care of with essentially two exercises, okay? Squats, lunges, that's it. You don't need a thousand exercises. You just gotta do it a little bit slower. Of course, you could do it fast as well, but um, make sure that you're not pounding on your joints. Um, like if you're doing any kind of jumping stuff, like make sure you land softly, right? You gotta take it easy on the joints, man, because if you do like uh, crazy plyometrics, right? You're gonna, your joints are gonna take a beating and you know, you're, you're gone, man. Like it's not gonna last very long. There's only so much you could do. The more, the more crazy um, weight, like um, very high impact plyometrics, no bueno, you're gonna die. Okay, so, and then, so that takes care of the quads, the hands, the glutes, you know, just by doing squats, lunges, uh, you do it on the floor and then you can uh, add some um, um, balance element to it. Like off balancing, you know, instability, instability with, you know, disc or even a yoga ball and all that. There's a lot of exercises, right? But I'm just giving you the, uh, the concepts that you, you have to understand. And then after that, well, what you need is you want, you want to be flexible as well. So there's mobility and, and then there's flexibility. So mobility is more about being able to move the joint in its full range of motion, right? And then flexibility is being able to, um, um, I would say, get into your, uh, your full range of motion, okay? And to get your, your muscles to, to, to get your muscles to be flexible, well, you kind of have to stretch them manually Okay, and you have to have them loose, so you have to massage them as well. Massage the muscle, warm, you know, and then after that, you have to stretch it out. Uh, I know a lot of people don't believe in, in flexibility, but but I do. And of course, extreme flexibility is useless. Like if you're flexible, uh, but you can't, um, but you're you're weak, then it's no good. You want to be flexible, and your muscles pliable. Okay, and you want it to be strong. So beyond a certain range, like if you can't, like you know how like those taekwondo people. Or karate people sometimes they could bring their leg up kick right straight up and hold it now that's flexibility and strength in action right but if you have to whip your leg up but you can't hold it there and then it just falls back like you have the flexibility to, to get to that position but then like you can't you can't keep it up there it means you don't have the strength so that's kind of useless so now what are the two things that you could do for flexibility and um what do you call it uh, for for these uh, for 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 the lower body? You're gonna laugh, but it's just the deep squat. So you just squat down, and you stay in that position. Like the the position that people, um, if you didn't have a chair, you would have to squat down, and that would be your sitting position. It could be you could be in that position to people eat in that position, smoke cigarettes, don't smoke cigarettes, and people take a poop in that position as well. So that position itself is very, very beneficial. So you should be able to, um, if you work that position, and ideally you want to be able to stay in that position for, um, well, like a very long time, you know? Like you should be able to sit in that position and just go about your business. Like let's say if you had to, I don't know, um, just squat down and, and, uh, and let's say do your homework, Okay, or watch TV, you should be able to sit comfortably in that position for long periods of time. But it takes work. So I think that ideally at the minimum, um, maybe half an hour, you know, but you, it's, you work up to that, right? You don't, um, you don't do all of that in half an hour. I mean, one shot half an hour because you're going <laughs> to, it's going to be hard. And if you, I'm going to make some videos on to show you guys progressions. Like if you can't get into that position because, uh, you know, your knee hurts or your, you, or uh, you know you don't have the ankle mobility, the hip mobility, or whatnot. Well, you know you just hold on to something and you go down. You go down where you can, and the more time you spend there, the more your body's gonna adjust. And there's so many benefits, but that takes care of for the most part. You know the uh, the mobility, flexibility in your heels, uh, and sorry, in your ankles. Okay, and then your knees. Okay, you see. So now you're going. You're gonna be knees over toe, but it's gonna it's safe because you're just staying there. You're not moving around. And at the same time. Um, you know, it's good. You have to bend the body in its full range. You, you, there's no weight on your back or anything like that. You're not moving up and down with a barbell or doing any kind of, you know, like stupid shit. Okay. And then after that, your hips, right? It's going to stretch out like uh, it's going to, uh, it's going to, it's going to help with the hip mobility, right? And it's going to stretch out your, your lower back as well. It's going to help with your spine, your posture. It's going to, uh, it's going to help with your hammies as well. 
So it's a, it's a position that I know it sounds crazy, but that position itself is very beneficial and you have to be able to get down into that position. Okay. So that, that's going to take care of, um, well, you know, all, not all, but, a, uh, it's a big chunk of your flexibility slash mobility. Okay. To be in, to be able to stay in that position for long periods of time and, uh, voila. So those are the things that you have to do. And listen, like if you, if you go to, if you go see any physio, okay, or, or specialists and all that, they're all going to tell you the same thing. And essentially it's you're going to have to, uh, get the muscles bigger and stronger. Okay. Bigger and stronger so that it could support the joint. But then what, what they're missing though, is you want it to be a smart muscle too, a uh, coordinated muscle. So basically a muscle, you want your muscles to be able to, uh, to be good at stabilizing, right? To be able to good at, to, to, and stabilize. There's no such thing as stabilizers, uh, stabilizing muscles. Okay. It's a role that they play. Every muscle could stabilize depending on, uh, what's going on. Like if it, if it needs to stabilize because it's being, um, it's being off balance. The muscle is then going to uh, go jump into that role to help stabilize, you know, the movement or whatever. So there's no such thing as stabilizing muscles. Like muscles are muscles. Like look it up. If you guys look up, oh, what are the stabilizer muscles? Like what are the names? There is none because there's no such thing. Stabilization is a role that a muscle plays, right? So depending on what you do, like some muscles will be the primary and then the, the others will be secondary role, you know, in, uh, in, 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 in a movement. So voila. Um, that's the thing guys. So you want, that's, what's missing when you go to a physio is that they don't, um, they don't explain to you guys that you actually need a strong and like you, you want, like a, you want your ability to stay, you want the ability to stabilize. You don't, you want a muscle to be stable right? You want it to be strong, but you want it to be stable as well. And this is something I learned recently from, uh, from coach, uh, Faraz, uh, Zahabi from, uh, from TriStar gym, the GSP's coach. And yeah, I, I bought his course on strong and stable, uh, pretty much everything. And yeah, I picked up a lot from that comp and with everything that I already know, well, you know, it just makes it so that I'm very confident that I'm going to be able to, uh, get back even better than before when I get back to doing judo and all. Okay. Oh, frequency. How many times, you know, should you be doing these exercises and all that uh, every day? Okay. Now, how do you work out every day? Well, you don't go as intense. So that means that you don't go hundred balls to the wall, hundred percent. And uh, you can't walk the next day. No, don't do that because then it's going to take you too much time to recover. Right. And you want to, you want to move, um, that joint, those muscles in, in its full range so that your body starts to, your, 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 um, your brain starts to register and your muscles start to register that, okay, it's safe. We could do this, you know, because it's trauma that happens, right? So it's in the body, it's in the muscle, but it's in the mind as well. So you have to, you have to, you have to get the body understanding the muscles, the brain, everything communicating that, listen, we're working this range. It's okay. It's okay. You build it, you know, and then you work on your, um, you, you add a, you work on the stability component of it and all. And, you know, so you make it into a smart and coordinated muscle, right? You make it bigger and stronger. You make it nice and flexible, right? Loose and uh, voila. And then you're going to see it's, then it's going to be beneficial. But if you just do it once a week or two times or once or twice or three times a week, it's not enough. You should do it every day. So you don't do, you don't go hundred percent. You go maybe 50 to 70% of what you could actually do and then do it tomorrow. Right. You could change too. You could switch up exercises and all, uh, it would be too much for this video, but I'm going to make other videos, um, shorts and all that on exercise and I'll, I'll narrate it. What I'll do is I'll film the videos and then I'll, I'll, I'll show them on, you know, a video like this. And then I'll, I'll narrate it and explain to you guys what I'm doing. All right, guys. All right, guys. So I hope that was uh, helpful. Uh, share the video. If, uh, if you need anybody, if you have any friends or whatever family that, uh, that need to hear this and I appreciate you guys, appreciate you guys very much. See you guys in the next one. Peace.